there's a line in your session description that I wanted to ask you about. It's, quote, now is the time to look at new ways to deploy and manage applications at scale. Why is now the time? I think now is the time mainly because we have the infrastructure to do it. Um, you know, cloud is no longer this new thing that people are still trying to figure out what their cloud strategy is. I think people are comfortable understanding that the level of automation you get with um, these hosted providers, mainly we call them the cloud. And now the technology is starting to be shared. So um, analogy I like to use a lot or, or thing I like to say a bunch is Google used to give us white papers on how to do things. So the big map reduce craze or eventual consistency. And now we're getting these open source projects like Kubernetes. And these projects represent things that you would find um, in a white paper of how you would operate infrastructure at the scale that they operate. So now that we're not longer having the ideas being shared, you actually have software you can download running your own infrastructure, and it's free for in most cases. So I think now it's becoming, there's no more excuses, right? So I think all the things that we need to do this stuff are, are here. The knowledge is here and the tools are here. What's the state of distributed computing? I mean, it's maturation. Is it young? Is it getting older? I mean, I think distributed computing was around before I was born, right? So I think the, the level of people that are starting to understand it um, the, the number of people that are starting to discuss it. So that part is probably immature, right? I think distributed computing was reserved to people that went to school for CS degrees, uh, people that were producing the white papers, and that very strict circle of people um, that were having those discussions then. And I think what you're starting to see now is that these problems of scale are starting to highlight the need for those white papers, right? So I think early on, people will look at those solutions and say, oh, those are solutions in search of a problem. Mm -hmm. And now you actually have that problem. And it really does make sense to look for things like consistent algorithms, a distributed lock service, because you actually have problems that map really well, and it's very clear to see what the benefits of having those systems in place are. So I think that it's immature in our, my understanding for sure, mm -hmm. and I think the general co community, like the sysadmins are now getting involved in distributed computing. Sysadmins are being asked to administrate these systems, and whenever you're asked to own or manage a system like that, you have to kind of dig into the details. How do they work? How are they supposed to work? How do they fail? When do they fail? So I think now that you're just having a broader discussion, and I think the kind of the non-academic usage of mm -hmm. distributed computing, that's pretty immature, and it's starting to mature as the tools get more mature. So there's kind of like this cycle that's flowing. This is kind of a weird question, but what is the biggest coding or technical issue you're encountering right now? To be honest, I don't think it's really a coding issue. It's more, um, at CoreOS, we use a programming language called Golang from, from mm -hmm. Go. So it's been around a couple of years. And one of our biggest challenges is managing dependencies, right? So a lot of people have figured, like, this has been solved before, right? Various languages has, have had tooling around, how do you describe and manage your dependencies? But the truth is, it's never really completely solved. You ha you're, you're relying on some third-party library that goes away or changes in some way, and you want to keep that up to date. So finding a way that allows us to stay up to date on the latest libraries and not break all of our code, I think that is like the most challenging thing we have right now because we have really good engineers, you can figure things out, people are sharing information like crazy, but just making sure that the quality of the software you're building stays up to snuff, that's like the biggest challenge right now. Related to that, what was the biggest issue you were encountering five years ago? Five years ago, I was primarily a sysadmin, so I think this is, for me, um, the introduction of infrastructure as code. Mm. So moving my mindset from using scripts to solve all of my problems, this kind of imperative workflow, do this, then do that, and if it breaks, I don't know, go in there and, and kind of hand wave and get it working. Right. And I think, um, and, and making that transition to infrastructure as a code was like, step back for a moment, look at the big picture, and see if I can actually describe our intentions um, in a different way. And that was like my introduction to like Ruby and becoming a developer. Mm -hmm. So I made that transition from a sysadmin, a purely sysadmin, to more of a system uh, software developer, building my own tools, integrating and extending the tools that I had. So I think that was my biggest challenge, really a, a mental transition from operations to development. So it was a mindset shift. Yeah, I think mainly, mainly you know, the way you, you think about things as a sysadmin is mm -hmm. you're usually managing software that's already built. Right. Usually it has instructions and config files and there's examples floating around. And a lot of times you're in kind of the mindset of tweaking and tuning. You may optimize for performance and so your skill set is more around, can I proactively make this better? Can I make it scale a little bit better? Logging and just kind of pulling levers, right? Um, and there are advanced duties in the system in field, but it's really working with established software. But then the mind shift of building new software, well, 
you know, usually some of the stuff that you're building, there is no guidebook on how do sure. I build this. You know, there's some patterns for constructing software in general, but the problem you're trying to solve may be unique to your understanding or unique to your organization, and you have to kind of solve that without much input from the rest of uh, your community. Last question for you. What people or projects are you following these days? My number one project right now is uh, Kubernetes, and I'm really tracking or discussing with people in that community. So there's uh, a person I admire a lot at Google, his name is Brian Grant. So these people work on a project called Kubernetes, which is the open source version, I won't say open source version of, but there's a system that, that mimics the internal cluster management system internally called Borg. Mm -hmm. And what they've done with Kubernetes is created this open source project that highlights a lot of the benefits that they had by using a global scheduler for managing applications. And watching that project unfold, so it released a little bit over a year ago, and just watching the code commits, I actually rolled up the sleeves and started committing code last year sometime. And just how much you learn from watching the code go in, the design docs and discussions around that project, and it really shaped my thinking of how I would build systems today, hmm. right? And it's really in line with what we do here at CoreOS. So before joining CoreOS, I was really fascinated with the CoreOS approach. You know, we have this minimal operating system that's designed for containers, and we have, you know, this consensus protocol on the network that you can use to build all kind of interesting tools. And one of those tools is something like Kubernetes. So right now, it's just a perfect balance between kind of where I want to be and what I think the future is for the rest of us. Interesting. Thank you for being with us. Awesome.